In 2007, the United Nations General Assembly resolved to observe 15th of September as the International Day of Democracy with the purpose of promoting and upholding the principles of democracy. Some experts maintain that the abiding principle of a democratic government is majority rule, where supreme power is held by the people under a free and fair electoral system. They also note that since 1999, Nigeria has had uninterrupted democratic governance, successfully adopting the principles of democracy, but not without challenges. They insist that to achieve sustainable democracy, Nigerians must understand that there is more to democracy than elections and voting. As Nigeria joins the rest of the world to commemorate the International Day of Democracy, how can she consolidate on the democratic gains made so far? What role should the tiers of government play in strengthening democratic governance? These, along with other issues, will form the crux of discussions on the program Nigeria Today. I'm Lydia Odijochi. Welcome to the program. With me to discuss the topic strengthening democracy in Nigeria is Ibrahim Modibo, a public affairs analyst and a friend of the house. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Brother Lydia. Also in the studio is Ezenwa Nwago. He is the chairman partners for electoral reform and convener Say No Campaign Nigeria. Glad to have you join us once again. Thank you. All right. Now, the popular saying that uh, that's, that's the accepted definition of democracy is that democracy is the government of the people by the people and for the people in your opinion is democracy the best form of governance thank you very much madam lydia for this wonderful invitation to discuss democracy along with my wonderful friend high chief <laughs> Ezenwa Mwoku. i am pleased to be here this evening to discuss issues pertaining to democracy. Democracy, as you all know, is a government of the people, where the people matter. Mm. It presupposes that this is a form of government that has to do with elections. It's a government that is acceptable globally. Because if you look at the issue of monarchy, the issue of authoritarianism, the issue of uh, government of selected few, or the issue of, you know, the kings and what have you, has gone. So the people matter. The people must vote. There should be free, fair elections. There should be freedom of speech and expression. There should also be a level playing ground where the politicians will come and sell their manifestos, come out to meet the people and sell themselves, and then their parties. What do you intend to do? In Nigeria today, whether we like it or not, we have to look at the issue of democracy from a perspective of content. Looking at it from the content and also the context of the word democracy, which presupposes the government of the people, for the people, and by the people, there is a need for people to bring up politics of issues. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, in the years gone by, we've seen... Democrats that have not been actually practicing democracy. In the sense that, well, democracy is not all about elections alone. It has to be the participation of people which is very fundamental and also one of the major issues that has to do with democracy. In my opinion, I strongly believe that democracy is the best form of government okay. the world over because it adds value to humanity in the sense that the people matter whatever you do you must go to the people and approach them for their votes and therefore if people vote for you it presupposes that look you have the acceptability of people and that you have something to offer by way of providing the modern security of lives and property and also looking at the developmental structures that has to do with provision of social infrastructure as it is today, we can see that this government, when it came in, it had a structure of fighting the uh, corruption, 
determine the uh, insecurity mm -hmm. and looking at the issue of provision of social infrastructure mm -hmm. and also trying to lay solid grounds mm -hmm. for democratic context or democracy to prevail by way of free and fair elections mm -hmm. and also opening the floodgate of mass participation within the polity of Nigeria. So democracy is the best form of government. All right. Thank you. Okay. Now, <coughs> High Chief, <laughs> this year's um, International Democracy Day will focus on the importance of media freedom to democracy, peace, and delivering on the sustainable development goals as a theme. Now, how important is the media and press freedom towards sustaining this democracy we're talking about? Well, these are components, you know, components of what makes up democracy. A free, free press okay. and, and media would, would be part of the intrinsic values mm -hmm. of democracy. Mm -hmm. But it is media that puts people at the center. Mm -hmm. The people must, because the, the, the word demos mm -hmm. is people. The, the Greek what? is demos. So once a conversation is happening and the people are not at the center of that conversation, through sometimes their representatives and the ability to express themselves within the confines of good sense, mm -hmm. then you wouldn't say you have democracy. The difference between democracy and other forms of government is interrogation. In dictatorship, totalitarianism, autocracy, monarchy, what is absent in all of that is the ability of citizens to question. So once you take questioning out of the, the process, then it's not democracy. And within the purview of that, the section of society that has the competence, the capacity mm -hmm. to raise this question when they are well trained will be the media. Of course. And underline well trained. <laughs> because if they are not well trained, they also have capacity to shipwreck mm. the same democracy. The same democracy. So citizens will then be educated and empowered to be able to ask questions. If you put a sack of chairs, let's say I'm asked to supply 1,000 chairs under the military, mm -hmm. I can supply 800. Mm -hmm. You will see sack of furniture filled up everywhere. And if you ask any question, you'll be called disgruntled element. Have you not seen chairs? What is your problem? Mm -hmm. But democracy is not just even about counting. It's also about what is the quality of the chairs. Mm -hmm. When you finish asking that, you say, the person who supplied these chairs, is it related to the person who... <laughs> so there are unending mm -hmm. questions and the ability to get answers mm -hmm. is what the media, the centrality of the media in a democracy. Okay. Okay. So if you ask what is their value, is that ability to empower citizens through information, education, and sometimes through entertainment. Okay to be able to play their role in a government that is theirs, mm -hmm. either through their representatives mm -hmm. or through directly. Okay. Now I still want to stay with you. How important is the, um, the SDG Goal 16 that promotes peace, justice, and strong institutions, particularly for countries like our own, Nigeria? See, when people make a fetish of strong institutions, mm -hmm. it is human beings that make institutions. Okay. NTA is nothing without you and others okay. who run this place. <laughs> so take you out. You have a building. So many times when we talk about institution and we make a fetish of it, we make it look like once you have a building and you put cameras and everywhere, then everything functions well. Mm -hmm. It is what are the standards, what are the ethical you know, values and considerations that you put on the ground mm -hmm. that can promote what, how do people promote peace? Peace without justice? Mm -hmm. Do you have 
equal opportunity employment? Can I freely express my views without the fear of attribution and retribution? What is the limit of my ability to make this expression under the law? So peace is a desideratum for democracy. You must have peace for democracy to thrive. But without justice, then peace cannot be will not have relevance. And then how do you create justice? Through fair play. Fair play. Equal opportunity. All right. And rule of law. Those are the things that help you guarantee okay. peace. Okay. Once you take out those things, there will be contestation. And once there is that contestation, then the ability to provide peace is, right. is taken away. Okay, uh, now let me, let me come to you. In uh, Nigeria's uh, democratic setting, the tiers of government, that's the legislative, the executive, and the judici judiciary, is crucial in sustaining her democracy. Now, how have these tiers of government fared so far or performed so far? Thank you. But uh, let me make some postulations on the issue of the functions of media under democracy. Okay. As a scholar of media within the context of democracy, I strongly believe that the media has a very fundamental role to play under a normal democratic setup for very obvious reasons. One, is the media performing the role as a fourth estate of the realm, has it been performing the role of its, of its watch dogism? Does it watch dog the activities, the nuances and performances of the government? Mm -hmm. Has the media been very fair? Has a reportage of democratic process based on social responsibility theory that presupposes that look, they should balance, they should be, uh, uh, you should, they, they should be the media should be able to, 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 to be balancing his approach mm. in terms of uh, coverage. Yes. It is supposed to be fair and also the sources should be credible and neutral. Is, and neutral. It is supposed to look at issues dispassionately mm. under a normal democratic order for it to, for it to work. For it mm. to work. Mm. Apart from, uh, like uh, Hachi Wongu rightly stated, apart from informing, educating, entertaining, there is also the role of the media of setting an agenda to the government. Okay. The media should set an agenda. Mm. But has the media been doing that under the current democratic setup? This is a fundamental question okay. that maybe needs another day for us to okay. delve right. into. The, the, now, media, the media is not ideologically neutral. It cannot be exactly. no, it cannot be ideologically neutral because democracy also allows people to express themselves, even alternative views, mm -hmm. within the confines of the regulation. Mm -hmm. So f the editorial content, the editorial view of of any media mm -hmm. does not necessarily need to conform with all those things that you said. No, you, no, you, you but what, what because I, we need to straight that yes, what I'm saying is, because curtailing yeah. the, the, this the, in wanting to get your balance and neutrality and all that yes, you can you can then bring rules that have strong the ability for alternative views to thrive. And see, in that, you are curtailing the The neutrality I'm talking about oh. is, as a media person, you are not supposed to pander to the whims and caprices of maybe the ownership of the media. Okay. You are supposed to be neutral. Okay. Whoever, okay. Whichever party brings mm -hmm. issues, write it. And give it a very fair decision. Okay. Allow the public or the masses to debate on it. Debate on it. Give okay. it a free... But uh, coming down now so to... We can't answer that right now. We have to go on a break. When we okay, come back... Okay, right. <laughs> when we <laughs> come back, okay. we'll okay. Take, you take your response to that question. Let's okay. take a, a breather here and right. listen to the views of Nigeria. So yeah. strengthening democracy in Nigeria. Put together by Butu Amila. Stay with us. Yeah. I think the democracy is a bit okay for now because we have an uninterrupted democracy since 1990 to date and that's a good development so how to keep it going is making sure that the electoral process the, uh, the process of electing leaders into the office is transparent you know enough uh, that, that will convince people that yes their votes are being 
counted. In the government, you see, we the citizens, we are the people that will play a great role. You understand? Because the government cannot form without the citizens. It's the citizens that will elect the leaders. So if we within our own, the major thing still like we within the citizens. Once we elect the right leaders, I think we get the right uh, things that are supposed to be done in the country. Uh, we don't need to go by calling foreign bodies to come and improve on our uh, democracy. What we need, honesty and trust. Trust. Honesty, trust. What I mean by honesty and trust is that uh, you cannot have a government that will tell their citizen what to do and they will not abide by it. If um, election is conducted and people see what they vote for, they count it there and they announce the result and they are satisfied, I believe if they allowed people to choose whoever they want, not imposing anybody. Welcome back. It's Nigeria Today and our focus is on strengthening democracy in Nigeria. My guests are still here with me, Ibrahim Modibo, Public Affairs Analyst and Ezenwa Ngogo, Chairman Partners for Electoral Reform and Convener Say No Campaign Nigeria. Before we went on a break, I asked you a question. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Yes, you see, the beauty of democracy is the issue that has to do with suppression of powers. Okay. Because in a democratic setup, they should be the legislature, the executive, mm -hmm. and the judiciary, all having their different functions and powers. The executive executes, the legislator or the legislature tries to bring up policies and programs mm -hmm. by way of uh, sending bills and what have you. Mm -hmm. They legislate. That's their major function, they legislate mm -hmm. for the executive to execute. Mm -hmm. In the event of any crisis between the executive and the legislature, the judiciary has a fundamental function of being an arbiter. Okay. Therefore, in a democratic setup, once there is fusion of powers, mm -hmm. where you find the executive overwhelming the legislature, as we used to see now, in most of the states of the federation, the government has already, the governors have pocketed the, the state assemblies. Mm -hmm. They dance to the whims and caprices of the governors. Whatever they say, the legislature is doing that. Therefore, you can you find out that in most of the states, there is nothing like the separation of powers between the executive because the governors have pocketed the legislature. It's only the judiciary <laughs> that you find standing on its own. Even the judiciary sometimes, you find out that uh, the governors also have influence. So, but if you look at the national level, we can see some semblance of powers where the executive executes, and even the national assembly sometimes they are accused, you know, of pandering to the whims and caprices of the executive by way of whatever bills the, the presidency or the executive b brings is self true. Okay. That is not supposed to be the case. There should be checks and balances where the legislature will bring up bills, will also legislate on fundamental issues. The executive is vested with the power to execute the projects for the betterment of society. They have to look at this passionately, look at the issues confronting the family, I mean the society, and okay. be able to solve it. While the judiciary on its own is a fundamental department of its own in, in democracy where it must function. Any nation that does not allow the judiciary to function is doomed mm. for democracy. Okay, Chief, let me, let me ask you this. Some experts have, uh, have expressed their thoughts on the recent squabbles and wranglings in some political parties. Now, do you think this poses a threat to the country's budding democracy and also the general elections? In a few months. Well, the, our our democracy is no longer budding. It's, okay. it's coming. It's emerging. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so I, that's important. But you see, I'm, I'm excited that you asked this question. You know why? Okay. Ninety percent of the conversations we have do not focus on the machine that the the treadmill through which our leadership recruitment process emerges. We don't ever have a conversation about political parties. We over-respect them. Their internal governance processes 
once it is wobbly, it will, cannot produce anything different. 90% of the political parties in their candidates, candidate, candidate selection process have run into issues. Many of them are in court. Why are they in court? Because they are coming from a tradition of giving. We give him the ticket. We gave him the ticket. Not that he contested. So, if you have your political parties being opposed to contests, an election is a competitive enterprise. They cannot survive contests. They have a problem with contesting. So, within the space of the political party governance system, we need to introduce democracy. That is what he called internal party democracy. We need to do something about the fluidity of movement. We are somebody is a member of Eze's party in the morning, in the evening he has joined <laughs> Ibrahim's party. There are no restraints. You go and buy form in, a, in party A to contest for presidency. If they don't allow you, you quickly become a member of a political party the next morning and you are their presidential candidate, including those who formed those parties. The African National Congress was formed in 1912. The founder of the ANC did not become the president of the ANC until 13 years later. His first position was treasurer. Today, those who form political parties become the presidential candidate and they don't because of what they don't like contests and so we are not in that conversation i think that the con the place to focus in a democracy mm -hmm. is that machine of leadership recruitment process to make sure that it functions in a way that guarantees stability mm -hmm. and progress and fair play we allowed the military incursion into our democratic process in 1999 mm -hmm. where chief executives ambushed political parties the the president of the country became the leader of the party even when their constitution has no such position the party meetings are held in government houses the wife of the governor becomes the leader of the women or in, in a political party. Chairman of political parties hold, become an adjunct of the government house. We destroyed anything that is called. So today you have a situation in which in some political parties, governors buy up all the forms for contest. House of Rep, House of Assembly, Senate, and hold it. And give people without any contest. That conversation is not in the agenda for discourse in Nigeria. We focus on INEC. We focus, we are talking about legislature. If you didn't contest election to go to the legislature, who are you liable to? Are you, are you representing the people or you are representing the person who gave you, who, who gave you form? I understand. Okay, now, let me, quickly now, we just have barely two weeks to the campaigns now. How do you advise, quickly, probably in a few seconds, how do you advise parties to go about it? You see, one thing that is lacking mm -hmm. in this democratic setup is the question of mm -hmm. presentation based on issues. Mm -hmm. You see, we have contest of personality rather than conflict. I mean, we have conflict of personality rather than contest of ideas. Issues will be more paramount. Mm -hmm. Let us look at issues of democracy based on the concepts of the political party. As it is today, every political party has almost, they will have almost similar issues that are being conversed. And therefore, I strongly want to converse okay. that the, in, in this democracy, as we are going into the main issues, main political uh, campaigns, let us have campaigns based on issues, issues, based on information, based on knowledge of the country, and also based on the needs of the common man, especially the issues of social security, the issue of security itself, mm -hmm. the issues that has to do with developmental structures, the issue of oil theft, the issue of corruption, which is very fundamental and paramount in this okay. country, and also, finally, the issue of education. Okay. It is very important that ASU, 
in the Nogo okay. should go back to school. to school. Let us teach our it children. It's important that government answers Asu. Okay. Yes. Okay. No, the government, the government has done very well. They are not done very well. No, they are, they are, they are, I'm, I'm sure they are on the verge of doing okay, right. Okay, this is what we call it a day. Uh, Asu should help us, the please. Let the government should help us. Yes, oh, the government should help us. Okay, but they are done well. This is where we, we end the program today. We all once again want to appreciate our guests for their presence and insight on the topic strengthening democracy in Nigeria. Ibrahim Odibo, Public Affairs Analyst and a regular on our program. We appreciate you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, Madam Lady. Another thank regular, Enze Wangwago, Chairman, Partners for Electoral Reform and Convener, Say No Campaign Nigeria. We sincerely appreciate your presence and your thoughts. Thank, thank you. you. And to you, our viewer, we appreciate you for being a part of this discussion. You can watch this episode and other episodes at www.youtube.com slash ntnu24hub. I'm Lydia Odijochi. Thanks for your time and see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.